Continue reading Bhagavad Gita by Sri Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 9, text 31. Sipram Bhato Dharmatma, Bhavati Dharmatma, Saswat Chantim Nigat Chatti, Kauntya Pratijanaihi Name Bhaktiya Pranashati. He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace, O son of Kunti. Declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. This should not be misunderstood. In the seventh chapter, the Lord says that one who is engaged in mischievous activities cannot become a devotee of the Lord. One who is not a devotee of the Lord has no good qualifications whatsoever. The question remains then, how can a person engaged in abominable activities either by accident or by intention be a pure devotee? This question may justify justly be raised the miscreants as is stated in the seventh chapter who never come to the devotional service of the lord have no good qualifications as is stated in the Srimad bhagavatam generally a devotee who is engaged in the ta- nine kinds of devotional activities is engaged in the process of cleansing all material contamination from the heart he puts the supreme personality of godhead within his heart and all his sinful contaminations are naturally washed away continuous thinking of the supreme lord makes him pure by nature according to the vedas there are a certain regulations that if one falls down from his exalted position he has to undergo certain ritualistic process processes to purify himself but here there is no such condition because the purifying process is already there in the heart of the devotee due to his remembering the supreme personality of godhead constantly therefore the chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare should be continued without stoppage. This will protect the devotee from all accidental fall downs. He will thus remain perpetually free from all material contaminations. Mam hi partha vya pa asritya e apishu pap yanoya istriya vaisas tatha sudras te apiyanti param gatim. O son of Pritha. Those who take shelter in me, though they be of lower birth, women, vices, merchants, and sudras, workers, can attain the supreme destination. It is clearly declared here by the Supreme Lord that in devotional service there is no distinction between the lower and the higher classes of people. In the material conception of life there are such divisions, but for a person engaged in transcendental devotional service to the Lord there are not. Everyone is eligible for the supreme destination in the Srimad Bhagavatam 2.4.18. It is stated that even the lowest, who are called Sandalas, Dogitas, can be purified by association with a pure devotee. Therefore, devotion service and the guidance of a pure devotee are so strong that there is no discrimination between the lower and the higher classes of men. Anyone can take it. The most simple man taking shelter of the pure devotee can be purified by proper guidance according to the different modes of material nature. Men are classified in the mode of goodness, brahmanas, the mode of passion, chatriyas or administrators, the mixed modes of passion and ignorance, vaishyas and machans, and the mode of ignorance, sudras and wakas. Those lower than them are called chandalas and they are born in sinful families. Generally, the association of those born in sinful families is not accepted by the higher classes, but the process of devotional service is so strong that the pure devotee of the Supreme Lord can enable people of all the lower classes to attain the highest perfection of life. This is possible only when one takes shelter of Krishna as indicated here by the word Vyapasritya. One has to take shelter completely of Krishna. Then one can become much greater than great jnanis and yogis. Kim punar brahmana punya bhakta raja rashayo tatha anityam asukham lokam imam prapya bhajaswamam. How much more is this so of the righteous brahmanas, the devotees, and the saintly kings, therefore, having come to this temporary miserable world, engage in loving service unto me? In this material world there are classifications of people, but after all this world is not a happy place for anyone. It is clearly stated here, Anittam asukham lokam. This world is temporary and full of miseries, not habitable. 
for any sense uh, sane gentleman. This world is declared by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be temporary and full of miseries. Some philosophers, especially Mayavadi philosophers, say that this world is false, but we can understand from Bhagavad Gita that the world is not false, it is temporary. There is a difference between temporary and false. This world is temporary, but there is another world which is eternal. This world is miserable, but the other world is eternal and full of bliss. Arjuna was born in a saintly, a royal family. To him also the Lord says, Take to my devotion service and come quickly back to Godhead, back home. No one should remain in this temporary world, full as it is with miseries. Everyone should attach himself to the bosom of the Supreme Personality of Godhead so that he can be eternally happy. The devotion service of the Supreme Lord is the only process by which all problems of all classes of men can be solved. Everyone should therefore take to Krishna consciousness and make his life perfect. Mam man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji mam namaskru mam evasasi yuktam aivam atmanam mat parayana Engage your mind always in thinking of me, become a devotee, offer obeisances to me and worship me, being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. In this verse it is clearly indicated that Krishna consciousness is the only means of being delivered from the clutches of this contaminated material world. Sometimes unscrupulous commentators distort the meaning of what is clearly stated here, that all devotional service should be offered to the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna. Unfortunately, unscrupulous commentators divert the mind of the reader to that which is not at all feasible. Such commentators do not know that there is no difference between Krishna's mind and Krishna. Krishna is not an ordinary human being. He is absolute truth, his body, mind and he himself are one and absolute. It is stated in the Karma, Kurma Purana as it is quoted by Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati in his Anubhasya comments on Chaitanya Charitamrita 5th chapter Adilila verse 41-48 Deha Dehi Bibheda Ayam Neswari Midhyate Kochit This means that there is no difference in Krishna the Supreme Lord between himself and his body. But because the commentators do not know the science of Krishna, they hide Krishna and divide his personality from his mind or from his body. Although this is a sheer ignorance of the science of Krishna, some men make profit out of misleading people. There are some who are a demoniac. They also think of Krishna but enviously. Just like King Kamsa, Krishna's uncle, he was also thinking of Krishna Always, but he thought of Krishna as his enemy. He was always in anxiety, wondering when Krishna would come to kill him. That kind of thinking will not help us. One should be thinking of Krishna in devotional love. That is bhakti. One should cultivate the knowledge of Krishna continuously. What is that favorable cultivation? It is to learn from a bona fide teacher. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and we have several times explained that his body is not material but is eternal, blissful knowledge. This kind of talk about Krishna will help one become a devotee. Understanding Krishna otherwise from the wrong source will prove fruitless. One should therefore engage his mind in the eternal form, the primal form of Krishna with conviction in his heart that Krishna is the Supreme. He should engage himself in worship. There are hundreds and thousands of temples in India for the worship of Krishna and devotional service is practiced there. When such practice is made, one has to offer obeisances to Krishna. One should lower his head before the deity and engage his mind, his body, his activities, everything. That will make one fully absorbed in Krishna without a deviation. This will help one transfer to Krishna Loka. One should not be deviated by unscrupulous commentators. One must engage in the nine different processes of devotional service, beginning with hearing and chanting about Krishna. Pure devotional service is the highest achievement of human society. The seventh and eighth chapters of Bhagavad Gita have explained pure devotional service to the Lord that is free from speculative knowledge. Mystic yoga and fruitive activities, those who are not purely sanctified may be attracted by different features of the Lord, like the impersonal Brahma Jyoti and localized Paramatma, but the pure devotee directly takes to the service of the Supreme Lord. There is a beautiful poem 
about Krishna in which it is clearly stated that any person who is engaged in the worship of the demigods is most unintelligent and cannot achieve at any time the supreme award of Krishna, the devotee in the beginning may sometimes fall from the standard, but still he should be considered superior to all other philosophers and yogis. One who always engaged in Krishna consciousness should be understood to be perfectly saintly person. His accidental non-devotional activities will diminish and he will soon be situated without any doubt in complete perfection. The pure devotee has no actual chance to fall down because the Supreme Godhead personally takes care of his pure devotees. Therefore, the intelligent person should take directly to the process of Krishna consciousness and happily live in this material world. He will eventually receive the supreme award of Krishna. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purpose of the ninth chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of most confidential knowledge. Hare Krishna.